In this lesson, we're going to learn how to obtain the mid-esophageal long axis view of the aortic valve. In this view, we have the left atrium and the near field, the mitral valve, anterior and posterior leaflets, the left ventricle, the left ventricular outflow tract, the aortic valve and the aortic root, together with a portion of the right ventricular outflow tract. This view is obtained at the mid-esophageal probe position with a probe facing anteriorly to take a cut through the aortic valve. In order to obtain the long axis view, I'd suggest starting with the aortic valve short axis view that we covered in our previous lesson. And this is obtained with a transducer imaging plane angle of around 40 degrees, certainly somewhere between 25 and 45 degrees. And once you've obtained this view, then what we need to do is rotate the imaging plane forwards by 90 degrees to obtain the long axis view. So here we now have the mid-esophageal long axis view. We have the left atrium in the near field, mitral valve, left ventricle, left ventricular outflow tract, aortic valve and aortic root. We've used a transducer imaging plane angle here of 137 degrees because that gave us the optimal long axis view with no foreshortening. Certainly the optimal view will normally be obtained with an imaging plane somewhere in the region of 120 to 140 degrees. Looking at the aortic valve itself, we can see two cusps here. The cusp in the far field is the right coronary cusp. The cusp in the near field is either the non-coronary cusp or the left coronary cusp, depending upon whether the probe is turned to the patient's right or the patient's left. So by adjusting the probe position and turning it left or right, we can sweep back and forth across the valve and bring either the left coronary cusp or the non-coronary cusp into view. In this particular case, what we're seeing is the non-coronary cusp together with the right coronary cusp. In this view, we can assess the morphology of the aortic valve cusps, whether or not they are thin or thickened, whether they're calcified, and whether there are any associated abnormalities such as vegetations. We can also assess the mobility of the cusps and how widely they open. Remember to take a look as well at the anatomy of the left ventricular outflow tract for any subvalvular stenosis and also the aortic root to look for any supravalvular stenosis or any aortic root abnormalities. And we discuss the aortic root in more detail in our chapter on the aorta. Finally, once we've assessed the anatomy of the aortic valve and neighbouring structures, we should apply colour Doppler to assess flow through the valve. And here we have colour Doppler applied in a patient who has severe aortic regurgitation as a consequence of infective endocarditis. And we can see this diastolic, very broad jet of turbulent flow which corresponds to severe aortic regurgitation. We should also take some measurements in the long axis view. One of these is the diameter of the left ventricular outflow tract, and this measurement is normally taken within half a centimeter of the aortic valve annulus. This measurement is used as part of a continuity equation when calculating effective orifice area of the aortic valve particularly useful in cases of aortic stenosis. We should also measure the diameter of the aortic annulus between the hinge points of the aortic valve, and this measurement, together with a previous LVOT diameter measurement, should be taken in early to mid-systole. Other measurements of the aortic root are discussed further in the chapter on the aorta. Finally, let's take a look at a couple of examples of pathology, this is a patient with severe aortic stenosis, and this mid-esophageal long axis view of the aortic valve shows thickened and calcified aortic valve cusps with greatly reduced cusp mobility. And here we have a patient with infective endocarditis. They have an irregular, mobile, oscillating vegetation on the ventricular aspect of the non-coronary cusp. 
So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited TE Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account, which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So take care and I talk to you soon.